Okay, good afternoon everyone. And in this lesson, in this session, we are going to talk about the preliminary parts of your research or your qualitative research. And uh, these are the initial components of chapter 1. So, to start off, let's proceed to, uh, you know, the, the discussion of what to expect in this particular lesson. So we'll talk about the first part of chapter 1, which is the background of the study and its subcomponents, which are the research problem, the global setting, the national setting, the local setting, and the research gap. Okay, so I will be dividing the major components into separate discussions to facilitate a more efficient and um, a more effective way of breaking down these components to you bit by bit. Kasi, so, let's start with the first part. Okay, so, as a general concept, the background of the study is basically um, of the part of the research where you are going to lay down the foundations of your qualitative research. Okay? So this is the first portion of chapter 1 which is generally known as the research introduction. So what is the purpose of the research introduction? Its purpose is to answer the question why. Okay, so basically this chapter is going to answer that question why. Why is this study necessary and why are we doing it? So this chapter will discuss the relevance of the study in as much as the status quo is concerned. When we say status quo, we are talking about the present uh, situation, the present time. And hopefully, as researchers, uh, you will be able to provide your readers with uh, the context of your study using this, um, using this chapter. So. Again, as I mentioned, I will be dividing the chapter into its major components, starting with the first one, which is this, the background of the study. Now, there are five main components in this uh, part alone, and these five components are distributed in into three different paragraphs. Okay, so basically your background of the study is the first three paragraphs of your first chapter. Now in the usual setting, we are uh, accustomed to having five paragraphs for this part, but uh, you know, we decided to shorten the components so as to uh, allow you guys to have a more pleasant experience um, in terms of writing your initial chapter. So these five components are the following, the research problem or topic, the global national settings, and, and local settings, and the research gaps. Okay, so for the research problem or topic, this one is the first paragraph of your background of the study. And in this part, you are going to explain the extent of the problem or the topic so as to establish and justify the need to conduct your study okay so again um, we need to prove that definitely the topic or the problem that you have identified is urgent and we will be doing that using the first paragraph um, just like in writing usual paragraphs okay uh, or academic writing we we provide a hook at the beginning of your essay okay? so consider this as um, a parallel experience we have to hook the attention of your readers by establishing the problem okay so to create more impact okay because that is of course your your intention in the first paragraph you have to sound credible as a researcher and to do that it is best to cite an external source uh, which talks about the same topic or the same research problem. Now, this is true for you guys because you are still students and 
you know, probably you are still building your reputation as researchers. And it would be more helpful to you if you can cite uh, already famous people or experts who have opinions or who have statements about your topic or your research problem, thereby making your first paragraph appear more impactful and credible. So when talking about the research problem, there are so many techniques, there are so many approaches to that. And, um, you know, for the purpose of not confusing you, I will just uh, cite or take an example which uh, makes use of one of those techniques, okay? So this proponent um, wrote the first paragraph in such a way that, number one, uh, the proponent focused on defining the research topic or the problem. Number two, the proponent also illustrated what is currently happening or you know the status quo. And number three, uh, the proponent also explained the extent of the research problem or the urgency of the research problem. So to give you an example, here is a sample. Okay, um, this paragraph is color coded to to give you an idea how the proponent divided the paragraph. Okay, so the statements in red talk about the research problem. The statements in blue discuss the status quo, and the sentence in orange uh, talks about the extent of the problem. So as I mentioned earlier, to create more impact, you can cite external sources, which the proponent did in this uh, sample. Okay, So if you want to read through the sample, then you can just pause this video or probably uh, you can read the sample from the PowerPoint presentation, which will be given to you. Now let's go to the second paragraph. Okay, so we're done with the first paragraph, which is the research problem. The second paragraph contains three subcomponents. We have the global, the national, and the local settings. So we will have uh, quite a lengthy paragraph, okay, For, or quite a lengthy second paragraph, since there are multiple subcomponents. The first being the global setting. Now, as, as an initial tidbit, our approach to writing the second paragraph is what I would call the funnel approach. Uh, it is funneled because we will start with the widest scope down to the most narrow or the most specific scope. And the widest scope in this, uh, in this example or in this context is the global setting. Now, what is the global setting? Now, in the global setting, you are going to establish as researchers that the problem which you have identified in your first paragraph truly exists. Okay, In the first paragraph, the research problem or the research topic is still quite abstract. To, to allow yourselves uh, to give body to your problem or to your topic, we are going to start globally okay um, in the global setting you have to look for a study which talks about the same research problem or the same topic but it is in the context of foreign countries so you have to identify or look for studies which are conducted in other parts of the world for example, if your study is all about, um, say, closeted LGBTQIAs, okay, your job is to look for research researches or studies about closeted LGBTQIAs, but these studies are conducted in other countries. So, what does that do? What it does is it helps you understand how closeted LGBTQIAs are perceived in other parts of the world. Okay, again, from an abstract concept, we are now trying to materialize the whole thing. So we start globally. 
Now, since you are going to cite studies okay, in general, make sure that you are going to include an in-text citation. So what do you do with these foreign studies? You just have to discuss the major findings very, very briefly. How are you going to do that? Number one, you do not copy and paste the results. Instead, you are going to read the results and you are going to explain those results in your own words. But do it very, very briefly. Number two, to achieve that, you must make sure that you paraphrase the findings. Okay, again, no copying and pasting. You read, you understand, you paraphrase. And make sure that you paraphrase properly. No spinning tools, ladies and gentlemen. Next. Okay, the second component is the national setting. So again, funnel concept from the widest scope, which is the global one, we are moving further down the funnel, uh, thereby making the scope a little smaller or a little bit more narrow. Uh, this time, we go for the national setting. So if in the global setting, we looked for studies conducted in other parts of the world, in the national setting, we are going to look for studies conducted in the Philippines. It can be a study that generalizes the Philippines as a whole, or it can be a study conducted in, say, outside Mindanao, in Luzon, or in Visayas. What does this accomplish? Well, it gives you the idea that okay closeted lgbtqias are perceived as this or in they are perceived in this manner in other parts of the world but how do filipinos perceive closeted lgbtqias okay again the scope is becoming more and more narrow and it becomes more and more relevant to you as researchers again do not forget to discuss the major findings of that study very briefly. Make sure to include an in-text citation. Now, to give you a sample of the global and the national setting, okay, you can pause this video if you want to read through the samples or you can just read from the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, keep in mind, these samples are uh, written separately to give more clarity to you but in actuality they must be found within the same paragraph okay let's move on to the last component which is the local setting now in the local setting this is the part where you are going to contextualize further we are going to make the scope even more narrow thereby focusing on the local context and by local i mean davao city in general or probably mcm or you can focus in mindanao if studies in davao are non-existent okay so probably in neighboring cities or neighboring provinces in davao city you can cite those studies so we are going to look at studies about the same research problem or the same topic but this time uh, more relevant because again this is much closer to home so again uh, discuss the major findings briefly make sure to add in-text citations for these external sources now here is a sample and um, take note that while it is not apparent in this sample, this one was written by a proponent here in Davao City. Okay, uh, one of the big universities here in Davao City and this particular author is a student, was a student there. Okay, so again it qualifies as the local setting because this was conducted um, in Davao City. So with all of these put together okay the global national and local settings all the discussions uh, are, are put together in one paragraph so please do not discuss them in separate paragraphs they must be combined um, just make sure to uh, discuss the findings briefly and in a very concise manner okay uh, do not sacrifice the quality of the the discussion it must be short, 
yet substantial. And uh, you can only do that by paraphrasing the key findings. So that's the second paragraph of your background of the study. Now let's proceed to the third and last paragraph which will contain the research gap. So what's the research gap? Now the research gap is generally understood as the loophole or the area for improvement in the preview studies which you have cited. Uh, those are the studies in the global, the national, and the local setting. So as researchers, again, you have to read those studies and you have to identify what areas they were unable to focus on, which you intend to focus on in your study. So what are the loopholes? What are the, uh, what are the things that they missed in, in their research? So since the global, national, and local settings are all studies, they're not articles, they are studies conducted about the same problem, you will now look for the loopholes in those studies and establish how you are going to bridge uh, those loopholes or those gaps. Okay. So again, identify the loopholes and establish how you are going to bridge the gap. Now, to give you a sample, okay, this is uh, one good example of a research gap or a paragraph containing the research gap. The first part, the one in red, contains the, the discussion of the loophole. Okay? And then the one in blue talks about uh, how the researchers intend on bridging the gap using their research. Okay? So, I believe that wraps up the first component of chapter 1 or the background of the study. In the next video, I'll be talking about the purpose of the study as well as the theoretical framework and probably the research questions uh, for chapter 1. Okay? So, uh, I hope that this has been helpful. Till the next video, toodles!